Just walk down the aisle of your local supermarket, and you'll see shelves upon shelves of soaps and detergents. With so many versions of each product to choose from, from extra strength to antibacterial to lemon fresh scent, consumers aren't the only ones cleaning up. <laughs> The craft of soap making began in Europe around 700 AD, but soap remained a luxury item for another thousand years. That's when a French scientist discovered how to make inexpensive lye using table salt. People also made soap at home by boiling wood ashes with animal fats. By the 1900s, the growing soap industry finally found ways to make mild and fragrance products. And in 1916, a German scientist invented the first synthetic detergent. This company produces mostly industrial use detergents, liquid and powdered. It uses salt as a filler in the powdered ones. Fillers add volume, making a product less concentrated. This will be a powdered detergent for cleaning and degreasing cement floors. They add colorant, then surfactant, a substance that creates foam, the vehicle for lifting away dirt. Now they pour in pine oil, a disinfecting agent that also adds fragrance. Now the cleaning agent, the chemical sodium tripolyphosphate. It's essential to mix all the ingredients thoroughly. This ensures the chemicals are evenly distributed throughout the cleaner. The last ingredient is a chemical called sodium metasilicate. It boosts the mixture's alkaline level. This particular cleaner needs high alkalinity to be effective. The factory packages its powdered cleaners, such as this laundry soap, in large plastic buckets. Automated equipment weighs then pours in the appropriate amount, capping the container tightly to prevent leaks. The filler in liquid cleaning products is water. To produce liquid hand soap, they first add citric acid. This creates the mild acidity needed to get the most out of the surfactants. This soap contains three different types of surfactants, a specific formulation designed by the company chemists to optimize the soap's cleaning power. To give the soap a pearl luster, the company uses this secret recipe of chemicals. The factory makes most of its liquid soap from this same base mixture. The colors and fragrances vary. For coloring, it uses powdered pigments. It dissolves them in hot water, then pours them in. This batch of soap will be pink. They pour in a rose-scented fragrance, then add a preservative to prevent the proliferation of bacteria should the soap be exposed to a substandard environment. Finally, they adjust the viscosity by adding a powdered thickener. If liquid soap is runny, it'll leak out of the dispenser. After 15 minutes of mixing, the soap is ready, and the lab analyzes a sample, assessing its physical and chemical properties. When the batch gets the OK, it proceeds to the packaging machine. This soap is going into dispenser bags made of plastic film. The machine first inserts a valve. It heat seals the film, forming the bottom of the bag. Then it injects 800 milliliters of soap. Next, it simultaneously heat seals the top of the bag and the bottom of the next one. It cuts them apart, releasing the finished bag to a conveyor belt below. After checking for leaks, workers insert a spout that controls output from the valve. This ensures the dispenser will release only a few grams of soap per push. Elsewhere in the factory, an automated machine called the pressure filler pumps dishwashing liquid into plastic bottles. An overflow and weight control device ensures the right fill level. The next
sex machine applies a twist cap with a pull-out spout. Then it's off to labeling. Those bags of liquid hand soap, meanwhile, went into special boxes that are designed to slip right into the soap dispenser.